customers, the domain customers are using your product. So this is where we simply call it as a scale or you know people start talking about SaaS as a, you know another successful business model where you can cut cost per person but you can have you know thousands and lakhs of people to make it bigger uh, revenue and cloud scale is another web scale is another internet scale is another so but in all you know yeah what we are trying to address as a software engineers is scale so nfrs so with the, one of the biggest uh, missing point in the industry is, you know, how to deal with, you know, we are very good, you know, because of the IT services, we are very good at, you know, meeting the functionality. But however, if you really want to make a revenue at scale, you know, uh, products have to handle NFRs very well. And one of the NFR is scale. So, but, you know, it is not only making scale, you know, yeah, you can actually invest a lot of money and then, you know, try to make it scalable, but, you know, that is again, you know, a wrong business model because, you know, you should not invest too much and then, you know, pay. So one of the focus is, you know, even how to make scale as a commodity. And this is where, you know, yeah, if you have too much of fire, you know, it is very, you know, nobody can actually survive. Uh, so that's where at least a limited fire is there, you know, there are ways to survive. So always in an you know, engineering excellence is all about how to make a premium work into a commodity. We should always, you know, if you really see the evolution of the software, you know, everything, you know, like even if you take a smartphone, feature phone, you know, one, you know, cell phones, you know, one landline was a commodity. When the cell phone came, you know, it was a premium. Then, you know, yeah, slowly uh, it features both uh, feature phone became premium and thereafter smartphones. So that way, you know, yeah, now smartphones are so affordable, but they are not the same thing, you know, when they came in. And cell phone, you know, even yeah, it was... Uh, Consider the premium when it came in because I remember for one second they were paying 10 rupees. Yes, I actually when I was in DRDO, one of my uh, military person was using it and then he was saying, you know, I can call anybody and then, you know, it, it, it used to, they used to pay, you know, uh, 10 rupees per second. So that way, you know, many things change, you know, whatever you say, over a period of time, commoditizing is very, very important. You take even if you take big data. Uh, big data is also was you know yeah, was a premium now with you know uh, so many things are coming in you know, you know you see ml ai ml it is making all these into a commodity but actually initially it was a uh, technology driven by big data engineers uh, bi uh, business intelligence now big data so that way you know to really see evolution you know i mean to me you know yeah it is only becoming more and more commodity and more and more people are able to deliver what is supposed to be a commodity once upon a time if you take even android programming so initially it was considered as a embedded you know a, a hardware uh, programming but now with android has made it uh, almost a commodity so yeah any now now yeah because this is a micro front end is a new term you can see you know how how people are started talking about it in india we see you know a lot of uh, you know i mean a lot of hype then comes you know united states and then you know germany and uh, yeah maybe uh, if i see it uh, micro front end yeah so there is some you know google itself is you know, not able to uh, differentiate micro front end and micro front ends uh, but yes you know overall you should see that you know in one one of my micro front ends you know india is leading the wave or you know trying to see explore what it is uh, yeah, Germany is another one where they are actually uh, Europe at least I see a you know, lot of people talking about and adopting micro front ends. Uh, the same thing I'm, I'm talking about just taking about scale. So the initially you know for scale people were talking about a data center approach where you know hardware was a data center and software was a three tier architecture where you have client server and database. And then next version of data and you know, scale has come from a cloud where, you know, yeah, people want, you know, hardware and now has become, you know, a commodity with IAS and software. Now you have two versions of, you know, you either you can use a platform as a service or, or you can use SaaS as a service. So that is a second version uh, where you see cloud and and then in you know, a third version has come. So now cloud has enabled, you know, a lot of hardware can be you know, purchased on demand. Now then they again people started focusing on you know how to uh, dissect or slice uh, software itself. So that is where if you really take you know uh, 
a three layer architecture you have a back end and front end uh, but now you know in the first version of you know evolution of scale after cloud has become you know microservices uh, where you know uh, microservices are only focusing on the back end and then they try to give make the api so that front end can consume those api and then display the dynamic content so this is what you see it so the, there are so many microservices and then you know you need to have a unified uh, front end uh, the front end will always talk to api gateway and api gateway knows how to reach to uh, respective microservices based, based on the url and fetches the data and that way you know yeah you have seen one level of scale after the cloud world where cloud world has made you know hardware as a commodity but now you know the second step you know now if you see you know evolution 3 now if you the once people saw the advantage of microservices they always thought you know why not we make and make you know uh, front end also a you know uh, why, why can't we try it into front end also into slice it and this is where you know they also observe that you know front ends are also the code is actually becoming bigger and bigger uh, there is no difference between back end uh, code uh, slowly they started seeing it. Uh, and in fact, you know, they named front end the usual front end as a front end monolith. So previously it was a back end monolith. Now they also observed front end monolith. So they always want now once you know in a software is so good that you know you can always change anything anytime. Uh, but yes, you should get the facts right. So now it is so much of you know uh, heavy monolith. How can I not extend it? So this is where you know a lot of you know uh, experimentation has come. If you really see you know microservices for the front end is actually a micro front ends has come, where they also thought you know why cannot you know each microservice each front end you know can be also sliced, and then a respective microservices also see and at one point you know we also observe that you know microservices is also not a scalable thing uh, because you know there are too many microservices. says who knows you know which front end needs or you know there is no control on you know who is consuming microservices so that we you know a yeah, lot of architectures have come in uh, where you know people said you know yeah, can i do you know uh, uh, my, uh, microservices or you know can i break the monolith of both front end and back end can i uh, try you know breaking micro front end based on you know team vertical teams based on you know uh, domain uh, like payment so a lot of things have actually been discussed i think that there is some maturity coming in um, so this is where you know yeah the evolution 3 people are talking about uh, scaling a front end in a following way i mean this is one of the way where they say that you know see one of the advantage of uh, microservices you know you can see the same name right uh, because microservices is already there micro front end is more easier to understand and that's where you know people are trying to say microservices is why is it only for the back end can we have microservices approach for front end or break up with micro uh, front end monoliths so these are all different names and different jargons but yeah intention intention is try to use the best tech, best uh, approaches you know which they discovered in microservices breaking the back end on a front end too and this is where if you really see it uh yeah now one of the advantage of microservices is people can always uh, code the service in any language and they want to give the same advantage on the front end also so if i am seeing one of the web page hello yeah am i audible yes yes carry on uh so yeah so that the same concept you know now if you really see it you know in the same page you know i want part of the view coming from you know different framework let's say angular or a react or a view or you know i mean th that's one of the you know best way of representing you know uh, how to slice front end in the ui uh so this is where you know the front micro front end world has come in uh so coming to the domain you know yeah, if you really want to say it as you know uh, in the form of in a solution yeah maybe in anchor we want to talk about what are the products available and once he places an order the catalog can come from a react and then you know recommended products you know with reference to his purchase can come from a view uh, view js so it is that way you know yeah people are started you know uh, thinking you know uh, 
uh, how to bring in uh, scale in the front end. So the one of the so again, as yes, why I said the refactoring is you know anything you talk about software, it is becoming more and more modular, more and more you know decoupled. Uh, you have to I mean there is no end for this. Frankly speaking, to me, yes, it is a bad uh, people who are actually left and right using the programs because any anybody can call the API. But these architectures are trying to help and streamline in some way to decouple without saying it is decoupling. Because now once you say that, you know, yeah, I, Angular product should actually work with orders. If it's the same language, you know, yeah, people will try to call it as API and in the same VM or, you know, same memory space, there is a call going in. Now, because it is so modular, you know, they're all working from different machines or, you know, different VMs or different Docker containers. Now people have to find a different way and automatically decoupling, decoupling is a must. So yeah, just give an example. Yes, you know, if you have, you know, micro front end, which actually displays this. Uh, MFE is another short form for, you know, micro front ends. So you can actually, if you see that, you know, yeah, the port in one of the thing is 8083, if you see it, you can only, if you but if you want to make a page which is actually a, a composition of you know mfe2 and mfe1 uh, then you can see it in another port 8082 so this is a simple way of you know composing a, a dynamic i mean there are ways to compose a view uh, from different places but the beauty you can always realize that you know you with this kind of you know modularity mfe1 can actually be uh, tested independent of a page that itself is a great modularity and decoupling. So another way is, you know, now that, you know, yeah, previously people were talking about, you know, uh, yeah, one, one page. Now you have to talk about everything as an application. You have one application, which actually, you know, combination of application one and application two and application three. And more apparent, you know, we always have, you know, header, footer, sidebar, they're very common. And then a content plane. So this is again, you know, what we do in uh, mobile applications is again coming into the web. But yeah, there are now there are no more pages in a particular uh, technology. They are applications by itself. So this is what you see, you know. Um, I mean, I think there are very, um, I think yeah, uh, more uh, easy to identify more front ends uh, at a modular level is because we are used to headers, footer, menu. And even in a content, you can have, you know, different sections. And then once you have all these, you know, then you can actually think about composing them uh, in a page. Uh, there is actually, a, I mean, there's something called a composition server and that you specify it dynamically so that it can actually pull content from different, different places. So, yeah, so what we said was, you know, yeah, see, now that, you know, we know that, you know, microservices for front end will look like, you know, different applications, which we are very familiar as, you know, uh, header, footer, you know, composition of you know, logo time, uh, different sections, menu bar and all. So now let us see that, you know, how, how this should be implemented within a company. So now previously, you know, if you see microservices, microservices, had a backend team and a frontend team. And frontend team, you know, all the frontend team was talking to a backend team. And that was actually causing a lot of challenges. So one of the thing people said that, you know, the approach of, you know, horizontal, you know, calling, you know, uh, entire frontend team is one and backend team one, it was creating a lot of problems. I mean, it does create a problems anyway, but then, you know, people will always say that, you know, because it is horizontal, uh, maybe you know we should try to fix that you know uh, with a front end so for example if a front end changes uh, view and it needs a different data why not you know front end and back end work together and then create their own services respective to corresponding uh, uh, front end and this is where the vertical uh, teams have started forming and another advantage of vertical team is you know each vertical team can decide their own technology they can decide their own services so from, you know, they can decide, you know, what is the database uh, the tables they require. So that way, you know, yeah, one of the uh, challenge what they observed with the horizontal approach, 
I mean, at least, yeah, it is recommended that the thing now go with a vertical approach where, you know, you will have, you know, a database guy, you will have backend guy, you will have front end guys, and then, you know, they will talk together and then bring out a independent modular unit, which works end to end for that functionality. So this is one important change coming in uh, for people to promote or, you know, realize the microservices. And then, you know, now let us see that, you know, now we, we want, uh, now how do we realize modularity? There are some frameworks which are coming in. Uh, maybe, you know, people want to know uh, this modularity be realized uh, in a different ways. One is at a build time. So what does it build time means, you know, I will have a, so I have a source code. And then, you know, this source code, you know, at a build time, you know, it will actually, uh, I mean, like once I say, you know, you, I take an uh, order, uh, I can take, you know, product catalog, I, I can take, you know, order service, all of them. And at build time, I compile it and then compose the page and make it into static uh, uh, site. So which means, you know, at least, you know, during the maintainability is taken care because there are all different source codes which I can maintain. But at a deployment time, they are still I know they're deployed as one site, which means, you know, I can still do this build time with a one language so because I cannot combine these pages into one source code either of different languages or framework. But it still helps, you know, to start with, you know, if you want to follow all Angular, you can still bring in a modularity at a code level. At build time, you compose it. Uh, so this is one of the sample page where, you know, if you have a, one language, you can say, you know, I have a detail page, search page, user setting, all that can be inserted at a build time. This package.json can be modified at a build time injection. And then, you know, it gets compiled as a normal site. So this is again, as I said, because people are not modular by, you know, uh, writing code. So with this architecture approach, they will automatically, you know, it is taking care of it automatically because now people are saying you have a separate code base. So they, they are able to actually, you know, uh, take a, you know, they still, you know, um, uh, write it in for one component uh, as if, you know, they are actually considering that as the entire application. Uh, however, at build time, some magic happens so that, you know, they are all integrated well. Uh, one way at least source code is uh, well protected on a modularity. So is build time clear? Yes. So yeah, so basically yes, it does bring in a you know, required component oriented modularity at a UI level and applicable only for language or a framework. Uh, and um, yeah, maybe it is not enough to build a component, but you need to also build a comp application. So one of the disadvantages is, you know, if you change code in you know, one component, you still need to build entire uh, uh, site. And and because it is deployed in one server like a usual monolith, uh, definitely you know the failover fault tolerance is still a problem with this approach. So some of the frameworks which are being popular in this context is, you know, bit.dev. Webpack is also does. Uh, it's a packaging manager. It is trying to support a lot of build time uh, composition. So then came, you know, runtime. So runtime, you know, now when you say runtime, you know, we have a server side and a client side. So what happens is, you know, yeah, people can still deploy now, you know, like microservices, the beauty of client side is, or you know, runtime is the deployment of each microservices is on a different server. That way, you know, yeah, we have five failover. We can also have a scalability because it's a different hardware for different micro printed. So you see this dotted line. So that was the difference between build time. So you see now build time, you know, entire application is as one deployment. But when it comes to client side uh, runtime. Yeah, each micro front end can be deployed in a different server. Uh, and then, you know, you have a composition, a client side composition, uh, which is an application cell, uh, which knows, you know, uh, how to get, you know, different, different parts of it and show it as a um, one page.
So basically, you know, yeah, what yeah, see now if you see it, you know, runtime is fetching all the data as it is from the source code to, to the server. And then, you know, at runtime, it is able to uh, get what it is required. So basically, what client is doing is depending on the URL, it is going to corresponding server and try to get the data and then build the final DOM. So yeah, basically yeah, you still have details search and all, but then you know the script related to you know uh, a specific detail page is here. So detail page container will talk about how to go to detail page JS. So it's generally it is an iframe. If you really see it, uh, slowly there for I mean I think yeah, it is equivalent to calling an iframe uh, uh, with the corresponding URL. That is a runtime uh, client side. Uh, uh, approach of uh, bringing in micro front ends. So print JS is one of the framework which is working to make this happen. But all of these, none of them are mature enough, but yes, everybody is trying it. Uh, then comes the server side. So one of the disadvantage of client side is, you know, yeah, see you are torturing the client uh, because, you know, it needs to do composition and then there is a lot of uh, uh, network uh, call, network calls happening from client to you know, end server. So which way the pain of throughput will be lower, uh, which is not right. And if people want you know higher throughput and then a better logic of composition handle, and that's where they put you know the composition you know handled by server itself. So that you know when you when a server you know if somebody asks you know get me order page. Order page knows, you know, a server knows, you know, they will go to order page and the order page will say, you know, get catalog also from there. Then the server interprets that server, uh, get me the catalog and then insert that and then final DOM is served to the client. That way we are reducing the network calls. So that way deployment is same both on the runtime or client and server side. But however, who does the composition is different. In one side browser does that. In other side, the server itself will is doing that. So here, server side, you know, you have two variations here. Where you know, yeah, one of the problem with server side doing composition is scalability is again a problem, right? Because you know, it, if it uh, n number of uh, with the client side, you know, yeah, there is a client load, but server is freed, which means you know, it can serve more customers, more uh, concurrent connections. But if that is doing that, you know, creating a final DOM component, you know, the, the load becomes start becoming you know complex and then you know server scalability will it will be compromised and that is where the some particular standards are coming in at a server side where they call it as a server side and edge side okay yeah maybe this is server side where you say server does everything and then send the final outcome to you uh, but uh, yeah basically it is like a uh, uh, in, uh, fetching the increment fragments and then reading those based on those special tags, uh, a special paths for that tag, a way to get the data. You have two ways. Server side is again a normal server, everything server doing it. And they also want to go to the next level where they talk about edge side. Edge side means actually. So now let's say you have a page, you know, which is supposed to be like this. And then we know that you know this is developed using you know a team of you know decide uh, how to decide and how to inspire and how to check out. So then you have so many variations like this, uh, so many parts of the page to be uh, shown. Uh, now you know if you really see you know there are so many network calls. So now you know in the server side what happened? Nginx itself will recognize that you know I need to uh, give a red tractor. So it will first go on then ask decide. And then decide will say that you know go to check out and then do this and then the final content is out to uh, uh, a client. So these are all SI frameworks. Okay, uh, so now uh, I said edge side is nothing but you know yeah they want to again relieve server not to make uh, you know not to make uh, too many calls or you know not to be overstressed with you know trying to talk too many times. And that is why they are saying, you know, why not CD and do this job of composition? And that is where, you know, the, some standards are coming. They call it an edge site or, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it can be any element in the network. 
it is not just server alone it could be proxy it could be router they really want to make sure you know this composition functionality can be injected uh, by you know some certain tags and then this edge whatever is the edge device understand those tags and then accordingly acts on how to get the data from that place and then deliver the compo uh, you know whatever is you know composition required so this is what you know uh, if you really see it you know it is more modern it is trying to help you know uh, reduce the server load and yeah various type of CD, uh, you know esis is yeah application delivery controllers you know yeah, like something like a gateway you saw the gateway for api so similarly you know you have an application delivery controller which actually you know is a complete composition server similar to api gateway and proxy web server web application i mean there are many ways to do it uh, but i would say cdn is more popular and then yeah in the context of you know esi you can see you know how amazon implements you know cloudfront so cloudfront is nothing but a cdn from amazon it knows you know yeah if i need to serve i need to get data from both payment and booking and it invokes a corresponding uh, uh, serverless functions and then get and get the data and then serve it so these are all some of the frameworks uh, which are popular for you know ssi and esi so so far am i clear yes you are quite clear uh, other pa participants can't respond their mic is muted but uh, oh. at the end of the session they will get a chance to ask questions sure okay fine so now what is that micro friends is actually helping us i mean at least on the theory what uh, on the uh, on the theory part you know what what people are you know what say now we have vertical teams what it what does that mean it is now you know now any company can actually if they want to build a saas application they can have a team based on features or pages and then rest of it is you know your yeah, technology becomes you know non manageable anybody can decide their own technology and then they can deliver end to end so it is not that you know there is a database team or it's a there is a back end team or front end team they are a team based on a feature so they are, yeah that's where you know they calling it as what sizing or vertical uh, team self contained teams and systems where they can they have more flexibility to decide now um yeah so initially you know you have to really see it you know we always you know we are very familiar with microservices architecture where you know you have product service availability service whatever not not uh, but front end remained as fat but you know front end was communicating through api gateway Uh, some of them are yeah, BFF is you know backend for frontends, which is nothing but a GraphQL. I mean GraphQL approach. Uh, now yeah, people are saying you know yeah, if I want to be you know three teams you know in a horizontal way, it is very difficult. Now let us talk about uh, team A with the micro frontend A responsibility, team B with micro frontend B responsibility. Uh, that way you know communication and flexibility are better so if you take the same tractor example or you know e-commerce example we can actually see this way team inspire you know yeah they talk about you know how customer can discover products team search you know is all about you know how how to quickly show the right product to the customer and what are the products available uh, catalog can be shown by team product and the checkout is uh, all the financial part can be handled by team checkout So now, if you really see it, you know, yeah, it's like right cross-functional. Team is cross-functional now. Stores its own data, has its own technology stack, is assignable for a specific mission, and ships its own UI. See, this is what is actually trying to get best of you know uh, flexibility and best of the scale. So that we know, yeah, we can definitely assume you know development speed is far better. small and autom autonomous teams with a clear mission because they are only working on uh, one thing at a time and because you know it is their thing you know yeah we can easily say you know how they can get all the data required for that customer and then try to fulfill it in a more meaningful way or more depth engineering way 
and uh, though it looks like you know yeah uh, reduce scope but yeah they can go deeper so basically we are not torturing them saying that you know you remember at everything about my product and then deliver no at least part of my product please make sure you know you go enough you have enough depth and then try to fulfill it in a very very beautiful engineering way so that way you know yeah you don't have to throw anything what you have learned there are always a way to you know uh, make it scalable so this is where we had you know um, micro front ends to one level and then let's get into implementation styles so this again yeah, uh, yeah some of them are already covered but i'm just summarizing it uh, when it comes to technology yeah how do you insert you know you know one dom inside another dom you know in a main dom you know multiple doms you have i frame approach which we are already clear and then through nginx you know nginx can actually you know uh, find out those html uh, uh, requests you know which will come back and then proactively go and then get it uh, something like this uh, where you know you have a web server nginx uh, 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 web client is there when it makes a request and nginx interprets you know Uh, when a micro app one gives some data, it interprets that you know it also needs to go to you know uh, based on it. If app one has got a reference to app two, it will directly go to app two and then replace it. So yeah, this is one approach where you know uh, servers are becoming more smarter. And then other approach actually uh, we already know that you know like for example Angular. and all they already have you know lot of component approach where you know you can actually uh, compose a new page by taking components so that way yeah this is already there within a page you can always call different different components and then build your application but people are not doing it right that is where you know yeah I mean, we are going deeper with the micro front end approach so yeah if you are uh, really doing it well with you know um, uh, components uh, definitely you not know, a build time can really help you know you can take you know different different applications and then combine it at build time and then show it as a page there are some languages are coming where how to compose a different page from different different component so other yeah so now this is another you know that now you know like you know we have server now nginx is doing that job now people are talking about you know another layer like a gateway which knows you know how to compose it well so they are calling as customized architecture but yes when standards come in you know they will be naming it as some you know front end gateway or something like that so now this is i think yeah, we are almost on the end i think yeah so now this is where you know you see the evolution in the past you know everything was you know uh, one monolith now you know yeah we were talking about front end and back end yesterday presently we are talking about microservices the future is actually micro front end plus microservices so yes by now you have understood you know yeah how is it different yeah rapid deployment and you know development and deployment because you know they are end to end responsible and then there is isolated uh, deployments for this feature alone easy to scale and upgrade yeah when you have you know three you know three micro front end you know each, each person can actually decide to upgrade himself again yes provided we are not uh, following a build time uh, micro front end approach and techno agnostic uh, yeah tomorrow yeah if you get you know, to, you know today you want to develop you are developing with go on tomorrow you want to try with rust you can very well do it uh, at least the new ones can actually go with the rust and because it is modular testing is always better far far better quality assurance is easy see when you can actually you know easy to test you know parts of the code uh, so that you know yeah the bigger one is taken care of well and definitely you know yeah because of the, there is lot of you know uh, complications are reduced by architecture the team is supposed to run and faster and this is easier to maintain so yes like any other uh, technology it is not only advantage there will be always disadvantage don't use it for simple app uh, please yes in you know, this again you know yeah, you are only over complicating it uh, always know the difference between easy and complicated 
uh but yes you know we are saying you know you can use you know tech uh, any stack but don't use left and right you know hundreds of stacks and then you know become a pain to maintain them so one minute huh? So those of you on the call, uh, yeah, you can uh, keep your questions ready. So we'll have a Q&A after uh, the presentation is done. Yeah, Nagendra, please continue. So I mean, you know, yeah, uh, uh, keep those disadvantages also in mind. Uh, so though we are saying they are flexible, you know, yeah, to make the UI consistent, there should be some standards which should be across these services, like what are the CSS standards? Uh, how how is the you know uh, intercommunication can happen? All that you know we should still you know there is a thin layer you know which we have to talk about uh, before uh, making them independent. And composition layer is still I would say that you know is going to be more complex uh, because you know it has to handle the event, you know, it should handle transitions, user interactions. But yes, it does reduce uh, you know, in some places, but yes, you know, from 90% complexity, it has come down to 20%. So that way you always believe that, you know, yeah, the 8% teams are more effective than, you know, 124% team. And if you really ask me, you know, is it a solar bullet? No, you should, I mean, any bullet, you know, you should know how to use it in a licensed way. So this is what I had to say. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Uh, now we'll go to the Q&A. Uh, so I'll start with uh, my own uh, view of the presentation and a couple of questions I have. Uh, so I like the idea. That, uh, I mean, I was quite new to micro front ends and uh, after this uh, one hour of presentation, I got a clear picture what it is and what benefits uh, it brings. And I also like the idea uh, where you established the context, how we started with monolith, went towards microservices, and how it then, you know, evolved, it has evolved to micro front ends. So my first question is, uh, you know, you talked about client side, server side, and then edge side. So I'm sure, as you mentioned, some standards are evolving around this uh, space. So my question is about the edge side of things. Uh, you said uh, literally any network element can do the composition. But it also presents a very uh, important security challenge because you are allowing a third party network element to inject code or inject what the browser sees. So potentially right. there is a challenge there in terms of security. Right. What you said is right. You know, if people are doing custom injections, there is always a challenge. That's where once the standards come in and then they comply, yeah, whatever they do, the injection they do, you know, I think uh, standards may say that, you know, it must only do that. Okay, and I am presuming that it is W3C who is standardizing this? Yes, definitely. Yes, yes. Yeah, it is not a normal standard. Yeah, it is coming from internet uh, yeah, W3C. Yeah. The second question I had was you had one slide uh, uh, late, uh, late in the presentation where you showed a horizontal slice across three vertical slices of styling. The horizontal slice was, you know, uh, looking at three, yeah, exactly this slide. So now, uh, you know, obviously this is a bad idea, but I had a thought, uh, you know, uh, see in the case of microservices, everything was in the back end. It was not uh, user facing. So it was quite possible, uh, you know, different people use different technologies and so forth. It didn't really matter. But here, front ends are user facing. So we don't want on a single page, you know, three different uh, colors which are like conflicting with one another. We want some uniformity in terms of visual styling. So how are uh, teams are trying to address this? Yeah, so that's where I said, you know, though we said flexibility, yeah, some view standards I and mean, look alike standards like CSS should be really agreed, pre agreed. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, so those I think that's where I said, you know, yeah, um, some of them, you know, not that it is completely independent, 
yeah to make sure that you know even user interaction user you know uh, view look and feel are same so the, how we what kind of styling you know what kind of you know reusable styling uh, styles they have to be pre agreed you're right actually yeah it cannot be styling cannot be vertical okay now uh, i will give the chance to others to ask questions i'm going to unmute you uh, sorry i forgot to unmute all of you so you should be able to ask your questions so shivraj please go ahead you can unmute yourself and then start speaking yeah thank you sir uh, thank you nagendra sir for a wonderful presentation um, it was uh, very informative and very exciting to know that uh, the idea of microservices can be extended to the front end as well i have two questions uh, one is just like how we have design patterns for microservices are there any design patterns that we should be aware of when we implement micro front ends that is one question and the second question is uh, coming to logging since uh, uh, now there is a lot of functionality which is going to run on the browser uh, what kind of logging framework or what kind of logging strategy do you uh, suggest that should be implemented when you are going for micro front ends thank you Yeah, so design patterns, which I actually talked about a build time, you know, how do you 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 have to decide, you know, I mean, at least you have to higher level if you really see there are some patterns like this, yeah, runtime, you know, how, how is it a runtime, uh, a micro front end or a back end or a build time? Uh, that is one level. Uh, other level is, uh, I mean, I think yes, there are, I mean, like you said, you know, still I have not heard of those patterns. Uh, like you know, yeah, you are talking about backend services, right? Uh, um, what do you call that? Relay, something like that, right? If you have failover, what do you do? Circuit breaker. Circuit breaker, Correct. yeah. Something. CQRS, like that, yeah. you have CQRS, circuit breaker, sidecar. So many patterns are there, right? So yeah, just what okay. was curious to yeah. know. Yeah. I have not heard of them. Maybe I should search and let you know. But definitely, though, some of those patterns will come. But at least for now, I could only say that. At least see that you know as it a build time or a client side or a server side composition. That is one pattern which is at least I could read and then tell you about it. Uh, but beyond that, I am not sure. Uh, but there will come something will come. Uh, what about the question on logging? Yeah, on the logging side, I am sure. Yes, you know now you know, should take even logging as a part of you know. Uh, uh, I mean you know uh, the API call. So all of them should use the same API so that you know, yeah, it is coming in. But you know, if you are talking about logging at a client side and logging at a server side, uh, I'm not sure you know the client side. But server side will remain same as you know what it is now because you know if the people are able to uh, make a logging and then you know uh, there are are you aware of a log for J uh, or a client which is established. Yes, yes, I am aware of it, and even on the front end, I have used Logly, but Logly is a, a kind of a paid product. I just wanted to know if there is any open source one that we can leverage. Thank you. Sure, uh, Angular, I have found one. I don't know I would, uh, which technology, I don't know, but Angular has some you know logging framework, uh, which actually you know, now you know one thing is like Log4j for a client side, which you can configure it in any way. So, which means, you know, even in a composition world, if all of them are using the same logging framework with respect to their technology, that would remain the same. I just like to okay. add here, uh, it is my guess. Uh, uh, presumably, uh, the logging will happen uh, wherever the composition is happening, because uh, obviously the composition is the complex part of this whole uh, architecture. So my guess is logging will happen on the server. If server is doing the composition, it will happen at the edge. If edge is doing it. So anyway, this is my guess. Yeah, logging, you are talking about logging API, right? Uh, yes, yes. So we have NGX logger, uh, for example, in Angular, I think uh, we, uh, normally we use NGX logger. And for inter enterprise applications, we uh, use something like Logly. Uh, so, are there any uh, logging frameworks which are more suited for the micro frontends? Is, is what I was like, uh, you know, curious to know. 
in case you are aware of uh, i am not aware uh, but i am also not able to correlate you know how micro front end can actually uh, impacts uh, the way we need to log uh i mean yeah the straight answer yeah to me looks like you know there will be no difference in the context of monolith or the front end but yes maybe i am missing something here uh, because it's a logging is like a api call right which can be used by each micro front end the way it was using it for monolith okay okay Okay. Any yeah, other questions from other micro front end? I don't know. Yeah, I need to see what 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 logging demands with reference to micro front end. I'm currently I'm not aware. Thanks for that clarification. Any questions from others? Thank you, sir. Thank We you. have uh, Deepthi, Gopi, Prabhakaran, Shruti Sagar, Ramanathan. Hi, this is Shruti Sagar speaking. Uh, I just Hi. wanted to know if there are any implementational examples on this. Oh yeah, I think I would say best way to start is you know these references, these frameworks. Each of these frameworks will tell you how to have. Uh, I mean, they give they start with the hello world example. Okay. I've not gone deeper, but I think yeah, each one of them that definitely gives a lot of uh, insights. Okay. So, are there any companies that are using this as of now? Oh yeah, everybody claims that you know almost all these you know big companies like Uber and all are using them. Okay. Uh, see, you see that who is using it. Mm -hmm. But again, yeah, don't take them at a face. Maybe somebody would have just you uh, make it, you know, in reality, I don't know. But I've seen some of the framework used by Uber, uh, Airbnb. Airbnb is the one, you know, which actually, you know, is very strong in micro front ends. Netflix. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that question. I was also going to ask who is using it in the real world. Any further questions? Okay, if uh, there are no further questions, uh, yeah, I would like to take this uh, chance to thank uh, Rajanagendra for this wonderful introduction to micro frontends. So many of us would be new to this topic. I hope uh, this has inspired you to learn more about it. Uh, I for one uh, might take up this topic and write an article on Devopedia. So <laughs> this one hour talk has actually simplified my work. So, so that would be a useful start uh, for me in uh, producing that article on Devopedia. So thanks again, uh, Raja, uh, for being part of the Engineers Day celebrations. Thank you so much. Thank you all of you. Yeah. Uh, someone has raised the hand. Deepthi, please go ahead. Uh, uh, good evening, sir. So I just wanted to ask, like, how UX impact on that thing? Could you repeat that question? How UX impacts? Uh... Yeah. Or how? Uh, okay, let, let Raja let him take the. Uh, Nagendra, the question is how UX impacts uh, micro front ends. Yeah, definitely. Say it how can we? Please, yeah. how can we? It is hundred percent on. You know, yeah, the UI development only. So basically, you know, it gives some flexibility and it you know, ask you to become a better developer. Uh, you are talking about UI or UX? Or UX, anything in UX. Yes, it UX is actually it, it complicates it much more because you know each user interaction, if it is within the same UI, it is easier. But what happens, you know, yeah, if I if I if you do something, you know, yeah, I place an order, it should go to catalog, which is actually another technology. Uh, you know, it is coming from you know another uh, micro front end service. Definitely, it complicates it. But the duty of these frameworks too is to make sure that you know it happens very seamlessly. 
it definitely has an impact but a uh, yeah, good framework will shield you enough uh, till that time you know it it will be a challenge for you okay yeah yeah it yeah, is so definitely we have, we'll have the same trade offs that we have seen in uh, microservices so we exactly. have we are bringing in uh, scalability reliability and stuff like that independent teams but uh, you know the complexity increases a little bit in terms of orchestration the chatting you know i love i love the word you use uh, chatting right yeah the yeah. interdependency is actually a chatting if you don't do it right it actually can actually bring down it it may perform much worse than a monolith yeah yeah and in this case because it is user facing uh, the ux can be impacted yes yes true the yeah, browsers will actually now need to do the sweat more yeah okay sir uh, i think the yeah go ahead yeah yeah sorry i was just uh, you know uh, trying to add i mean i uh, sir i think uh, the uh, main advantages of having this micro front end is from the development and maintenance perspective right and not necessarily from the user experience uh, not necessarily in the sense it can be better but i think in terms of parallel development or maybe uh, maintaining these individual code bases for the individual micro front ends right that becomes much more easier when we switch to micro front ends uh, i hope i am right see at the end you know finally you know user has to buy your product if you are taking away something from him if his experience is going down any amount of engineering streamline is not enough right so yes you know yeah you have to without in fact you know yeah without taking away anything from the user or giving more is okay but at least you know don't take away whatever it is their responsiveness have to be very very fast right see this is where you know yeah if you see you no know, client side you know responsiveness will be horrible that is why they move to server side hmm so i would say that you know micro front end cannot compromise on usability of the user but yes if it is doing it will definitely be a failure technology yes thank you sir gopi you had a question go ahead yeah uh sorry uh maybe it's uh, it's not a question i was just thinking about um, this uh, angular and uh, reacts uh, implementation of the web components are different in the way of uh, like one uses shadow dom and one uses virtual dom and uh, going further the angular uses the change detection strategy and everything so i was thinking what what happens if we mix multiple frameworks and whether they will continue to behave in the same uh, way they have been designed uh, if we put multiple uh, um yeah i think the way they are trying to do is they want to isolate you know these component i mean like you when you com uh, compose in a page they really want to make sure that you know all the you know react actually works within that container you know or you know the part of the uh, page as seamlessly as possible and even angular or view whatever is there you know yeah see, that's where you know browser smartness will come or a composition smartness will come uh, if there are gaps i'm sure you know with micro frontends you know the standards and stabilizing this framework will fix that but yes it is a challenge because you know at the end you know uh, what we are you know if it is a client side it is definitely a challenge if it is done at a server side because you know the browser is only getting you know final html uh, final html css and javascript it should be more easier but yes if it is a client side you know these clashes can or you know very high likely of you know uh challenges thank you sir i would like to share my screen and uh, just uh, sh share some thoughts on uh, one possible way in which devopedia can use micro front end so after that uh, probably sure. nagendra can comment sure sure are you able to see my screen yes we can yes okay 
So this is an article on Devopedia. Word to Vec is the article. So uh, now within this article, you know, uh, people can give comments. So in this example, you know, the comments are not visible by default. But if the user clicks this icon, then this comment window pops up. Now the thing is, what I, uh, uh, I mean, my idea is this comment window can be one particular micro front end. Because most of the time this is not on, right? Most of the time uh, users don't click on that icon. So they will only see the default uh, article page. This is how it looks. And uh, we can, I mean, in a simplified system, this whole thing can be one micro front end. But the chat itself is served by another micro front end. Which can be even, you know, real time. Like if I put a comment, anybody else who is viewing this chat will see that comment. Now, uh, the reason I showed you this as an example is, uh, you know, in terms of scalability, because if you compare it with the microservices architecture, uh, let's say in an e commerce site, you could have, uh, you know, uh, few instances of shopping cart running, but many more instances of, uh, you know, delivery running. So that is the kind of independence uh, they promise. So it's not that the whole application scales uh, together. So the same is the case here in the case of micro front ends. Many more people will be viewing this article. So there will be more instances serving this article, but fewer people will be actually opening up the chat. So you will have fewer instances of this particular micro front end. So this is the kind of thought process I had. Uh, any comments on this? Yeah, that's a perfect example where you know it is totally I, I mean, independent of other work. Yes, this is quite independent of the actual article because it's right. a separate like an add on to the article page. You can say right, right. But only thing is yeah, it can go much deeper within the page itself. It can actually make everything like summary summary part also can be a a different yeah. uh, micro front end, but yeah, the what you said chart can be a very dependent one. I mean, that's a definitely a great case where you know, yeah, if, you know, if you have these kind of you know, uh, different, you know, very independent UI, and then they can be assembled and then the load can be reduced. But even within a page, you know, they want to go deeper and deeper. It's actually, yeah, we heard of port, uh, portlets in Java specification, portal concept. No, I have not heard, but somebody familiar with Java would have heard, I, I suppose. Yeah, so portal architecture, you know, yeah, is very comfortable in you know, the world in the Java world. Uh, so now, you know, but that is again, you know, limited to one technology and some of these specifications are now coming at a uh, developer level, you know, and a generic level. OK, OK. So where you know they solve the problem of you know how one portlet actually communicates with other like summary part how does it communicate with you know content part so probably there is some uh, thing to be gained by adopting that on the front end side as well yes yes yeah so i think uh, we are running out of time let's uh, break here and uh, thanks everyone for joining this session uh,